हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू दर्ल्ड ऑफ फाइनेंस इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द टॉपिक एक्सचेंज ट्रेडेड फंड वॉट वी हैव लर्न इन द अर्लियर पार्ट वॉज ऑल अबाउट द बेसिक मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्सचेंज ट्रेडेड फंड होल प्रोसेस ऑफ क्रिएशन एंड रिडेमशन यूनिट्स नाउ इन दिस क्लास वी आर एमिंग एट अ स्पेसिफिक डिस्कशन that is about basically three components one is what we call as tracking difference one is what we call as tracking error and then we will also discuss the third aspect that is the sources of tracking error so what is this tracking difference now this part onward it is indeed very simple so you just need to know the terminology and the task is done so what is tracking difference now see as we have discussed and learned earlier etf is basically trying to replicate a particular index but in reality it may not completely be able to replicate it and therefore the return offered by the index and the return generated by the etf may have difference sometimes favorable difference sometimes unfavorable difference from the viewpoint of the etf investor so obviously this difference is nothing but the difference in the return generated by the fund that is etf and the return offered by the index you just have to find the difference that is simply the tracking difference so i'll just do one thing i'll give you some important notes over here so you may quickly note it down tracking difference is the difference between the performance of an etf and the performance of its benchmark index over a specific period etf performance this is the return that investors receive from holding the etf which includes price changes and dividends you know simply the way you compute holding period return that way the etf return can be computed and benchmark index performance this is the return of the index that the etf aims to replicate based on the performance of the underlying securities in the index so please write up this whole content and then i take you ahead all right friends i am sure you have completed writing this whole thing now some students may have a typical doubt over here sir what if there is no tracking difference what if there is a complete replication of the index then fine tracking difference won't exist correct so tracking difference if it doesn't exist it is also part of your analysis right that your etf does not have any tracking difference now if i take an example on computing tracking difference it's going to be very simple again look at this tracking difference is basically the etf return minus the benchmark index return see first you have to necessarily take etf return because it is not the index that is trying to replicate the etf it is etf that is trying to replicate the index index exists earlier so are you able to do better than the index or not that is why if you want to compute the difference you have to always take etf returns first and from that you subtract the index returns so if the difference is positive means the etf is outperforming the index if the difference turns to be negative the etf is underperforming so if i take you to an example simply over here you can just look into the details of this case if an etf returns 8% over a year but the benchmark index returns 9% the tracking difference would be 8% minus 9% that is negative 1% and the moment you have tracking difference as negative you can conclude that etf underperformed the index by 1% so please write up this as well and then i take you ahead all right friends i am sure you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and now talk about tracking error now what could be the tracking error again this is something very simple you know what is happening the benchmark index 
is generating some return and the ETF return would fluctuate near around that. That means you will find tracking difference either as positive or as negative. That means it is fluctuating around the benchmark return or the index return. If you simply try to compute the standard deviation of this difference, correct? The standard deviation of this difference, that standard deviation will indicate the tracking error. See the way we generally use the term standard error. Likewise, standard deviation can be used for determining tracking error. So tracking error is nothing but computed standard deviation on the difference of the track or I would say tracking difference standard deviation would represent the tracking error. So how to compute tracking error just like standard deviation. But the idea is why this kind of difference is arising where you have attempted to replicate the entire index in spite of that why the difference has arisen that is the more important aspect of this discussion there you need to focus on the sources of tracking error why this tracking error has arising that you need to identify and what is the source why it is arising you have to just look into the source of the tracking error so let us discuss this whole thing one by one First write about tracking error. Tracking error measures the volatility of the differences between the ETF returns and the benchmarks index returns over time. So the moment you find the word volatility, it is a hint that it is nothing but the standard deviation. It indicates how consistently the ETF follows its benchmark. Tracking error is expressed as the standard deviation of the tracking differences over a specific period. A lower tracking error indicates that ETF closely follows the benchmark index while a higher tracking error indicates more variability and less consistency in matching the index. So please write up this whole thing and then I take you ahead. Alright friends, I am sure you have completed writing this whole thing. Now what is worth understanding over here? Standard deviation of the tracking differences. Whatever tracking differences you have computed, the standard deviation of those differences is the tracking error. And what is interpreted out of the tracking error? That is again important thing because if I ask you to compute standard deviation, I don't doubt that you will commit any mistakes over there because you have been learning computation of standard deviation all throughout. What is important is how do you interpret that standard deviation? That standard deviation that indicates the tracking error, the lower the tracking error, the better it is, right? Means it is indicating less volatility, means the deviations from the asset return or the index return is lesser that means there is less deviation from the index returns and therefore more consistency if you find high degree of tracking error means there are wider fluctuations and less consistency with respect to the index returns so simple objective is you would try to replicate an index therefore your returns should match with that index return and therefore to the extent it is having a little bit of difference, it is understandable. It cannot 100% give you same result, but more or less it will be giving you similar kind of returns. But if the difference is very high, means your objective of keeping it aligned to the index is not actually getting fulfilled. And somewhere you need to do some strategical changes for your ETF. So let us do one thing. Let us identify the sources of tracking error and first you need to write numerous factors can account for differences between an ETF's expected and actual performance and the range of results with respect to its index. Because of this funds tracking the same underlying index can have very different index tracking results. Sources of tracking error can include the following. First one, fees and expenses. 
इंडेक्स कैलकुलेशन जनरली अज्यूम्स दैट ट्रेडिंग इज फ्रिक्शनलेस एंड ऑकर्स एट द क्लोजिंग प्राइस अ फंड ऑपरेटिंग फीस एंड एक्सपेंसिस रेड्यूज द फंड रिटर्न रिलेटिव टू द इंडेक्स सो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व वन थिंग सी इंडेक्स ऑफ एनी स्टॉक मार्केट इट इज बेसिकली नॉट मैनेज फॉर सम वन इट इज बेसिकली जस्ट मैनेज जनरली एज पार्ट ऑफ द स्टॉक मार्केट रिक्वायरमेंट बिकॉज द स्टॉक मार्केट रिक्वायर्स एन इंडेक्स एंड इंडेक्स हैज टू बी क्रिएटेड एंड इंडेक्स रिटर्न हैव टू बी कंप्यूटेड यू आर नॉट चार्जिंग एनी फीस टू दैट वेर एज इन ई टी एफ इवन दो द फीस इज लोअर लो ऑपरेटिंग फी वी हैव लर्न ऑल दैट अर्लियर कंपेयर टू म्यूचुअल फंड एंड ई टी एफ विल बी हैविंग सिग्निफिकेंटली लोअर फी बट इन स्पाइट ऑफ दैट फी इज स्टिल चार्ज वेर एज देर इज नो फी चार्ज ऑन द इंडेक्स ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज ऑफ द फी चार्ज ई टी एफ रिटर्न विल गेट लोअर कंपेयर टू द इंडेक्स रिटर्न देर विल बी ऑलवेज डिफरेंसेज बिटवीन द इंडेक्स रिटर्न एंड द ई टी एफ रिटर्न फॉर वेराइटीज ऑफ रीजन्स and that is what we are calling as sources of tracking error so please write up this whole thing and then i take you to other sources of tracking error all right friends once you have completed writing this whole thing let us move ahead and continue writing further representative sampling and optimization that is the next point of difference now see sometimes statistics can go against you when i say statistics can go against you means you have learned how to efficiently and effectively use sampling in statistics instead of the entire population you observe a sample and try to draw inferences from that sample with respect to the population characteristics that is what you have learned in sampling and testing of hypothesis correct now if you just observe one thing instead of creating the entire replica of the index you might have taken some selective securities to formulate your own etf in that case if it is not representing the 100% of inclusion of every security in the index obviously where you have taken a sample sampling can have error so sampling error can become the other part of the source of the tracking error so let us uh, continue writing that point rather than fully replicate the index funds may hold only a subset of index securities to track the benchmark index then depository receipts could be yet another reason or another source funds may hold securities that are different from those in the index such as adrs gdrs etc i am sure you know what are these depository receipts you have learned it already at level 1 index changes fund may trade index changes at times and prices that are different from those of the benchmark tracked now let me explain this fourth point to you see what happens the index will have changes because index cannot be a static portfolio index is a dynamic portfolio because it is actively managed portfolio keep in mind one thing you know how an index is formulated so the composition of that index may change to keep it as an efficient portfolio because any stock market index would aim at keeping the portfolio as an efficient portfolio and if the etf is trying to replicate that because of the changes made over there the fund will also have to make those changes the etf will also have to make those changes while making those changes change over of these securities which are the underlying assets of the fund can also bring about some changes in the returns of the fund as compared to the index because again when you are buying and selling any security through the authorized participants definitely there will be some fee or some charges that may get involved which doesn't happen with index now here it is not the fee that the fund is charging it is the expense that the fund is incurring which was not incurred at the level of index 
So please write up this whole thing and then I take you ahead with the next sources. All right friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and continue writing further. Fund accounting practices. Fund accounting practices may differ from index calculation methodology, for example, valuation practices for foreign exchange and fixed income. Now this is something very simple for you to understand. See the valuation norms that are followed by the index and the valuation norms followed by the ETF may be different and that is where there may be again a reason for the tracking error to arise or the source of tracking error could be this kind of changes in the or differences in the valuation methodology. Regulatory and tax requirements. Funds may be subject to regulatory and tax requirements that are different from those assumed in index methodology. Now there is nothing much to explain over here. You know it very well that the tax requirement and the regulations of different countries with respect to the index of the stock market and with any ETF obviously it will not be same it will be different and because of that also it becomes a source of a tracking difference. Asset manager operations ETF issuers may attempt to offset costs through security lending and foreign dividend recapture these act as negative costs which enhance fund performance relative to the index. So let me explain this last point over here. Six point does not require much of the explanation. Here we are talking about some negative costs means factors that can reduce the cost. So what happens an ETF may use leverage. It may have some kind of borrowing effect and enhanced investment in the market for securities or towards securities that may generate high returns. Now what will happen in order to create the similar replica of the index if there is any use of leverage in the ETF where leverage will not be involved with index again there can be a reason for difference in the returns that is generated by the fund and by the index. So sometimes what happens to compensate the expenses that is incurred at the ETF level which is not incurred at the index level the fund manager may use some strategies of you know leverage returns or some other strategies which may enhance the returns or may reduce some kind of cost those factors which contribute to negative cost will become a reason for enhancing the return of ETF ultimately whether it is giving a positive difference or a negative difference but it is still becoming the reason for a difference and that is what we call this as a source of tracking error. So please write up this whole thing and with that we will be putting an end to this class.